Hello everyone, welcome to a TechAbility webinar. Um, joined here today with Rowan. Uh, we'll just uh, give a few more minutes just for the those coming in. Um, if you just want to have a bit of time just to familiarise yourself with the um, kind of chat panel, there's um, a uh, chat panel on the right hand side and there's also questions there as well. Uh, you should be able to see both of those. So uh, feel free to kind of have a practice there and um, use those. Uh, we'll be taking questions throughout the session and just picking them up when we can or if not at the end. Got subtitles set up for you all today. So you'll be able to access those. And I'll also process this um, to create a transcript that we can email through when we send through the slides. Um, so there'll be two lots of slides today. There'll be uh, my own and Rowan's. And yeah, we'll just give it another minute and then we'll get started. Okay, so welcome everyone to NatSpec Tech Abilities webinar program. Today we're covering assistive technology training, what's available. Um, so it's, this is presented with myself, Neil Beck. Um, I'm an assistive technologist at NatSpec TechAbility, TechAbility. And we're joined today by Rowan. Hello, hello Rowan. Hello everyone. Uh, thanks Neil for having me. No problems. Um, do you want to give just a minute just to introduce yourself? Sure, I'm a, a lecturer at the University of Dundee. Uh, I have been for just over two weeks. <laughs> So prior to that, I worked for JISC for five years. And before that, I worked at uh, Beaumont College in Lancaster, which is an independent specialist college. Great. Thanks, Rowan. And we'll be hearing from Rowan about the master's programme shortly. So um, what types of training are available? It depends on what you're after. And, and maybe you'll want one of these. Maybe you'll want a combination of these. There are There is academic training. There is technology specific training. There's practical training, which covers a wide kind of uh, area of things like assessment um, and pedagogy and all those type of things. And there's bespoke training where you can go to an organization and lay out your requirements and they can come up with something to, to match them. So some of the organizations that we'll talk about today cover a mixture of those. Some of them will focus more on one area. So we're going to start with academic study and short courses. Um, so there is an inclusive digital technology course between University of Edinburgh and the call centre. Um, there are AA centres from AAC modules from the AAC Scotland and call centre. Um, and there's an evidence based assessment in complex communication needs from Manchester Metropolitan University. Um, there are a wide range of masters. Now, these aren't specifically around assistive technology, but it depends on what you cover as a professional. These might be more or less relevant to you. Um, so we've got disability design and innovation, augmentative and alternative communication, which is about communication aids. Uh, there is um, masters by research on ambient assisted living uh, and a masters for design healthcare and assistive technologies. We've also got digital health at Bournemouth University, um, digital health and artificial intelligence, rehabilitation engineering and assistive technologies, and special needs and inclusion. Now the one that we're going to have a quick focus on as uh, we've got Rowan here today is the Masters in Educational Assistive Technology. So Rowan, I'm just going to make you the presenter. There we go. And now Rowan will be able to share his screen. I'll be able to go through the webinar program there. Thank you. Um, thanks, Neil. Hopefully you can all see uh, um, a still of Bermuda. I'm hoping that's happening. Is that right? Yep, we've got that. Yep. OK, right. I'll just start the slideshow. Um, and I should, it should have started. Uh, yep, there we go. Uh, the, the subtitles are in there. Um, right, so thank you, Neil, for giving me a chance to um, talk a little bit about the MSC that we've, uh, we're just uh, launching for uh, next year. So we're in the midst of developing the material for this now. Um, 
the, it's so it's a new uh, a new course which is uh, based on uh, some uh, some work that some of you may be familiar with. So if you had anything to do with the Dart project, uh, quite a lot of the work that that went into that um, has been um, kind of embedded within um, this uh, this new MSc. We do intend in time for uh, the title uh, Educational Assistive Technologist to become uh, potentially a protected title, but that is some years away. So we really need to, uh, this is the descriptor I was originally given when this presentation was prepared for the TechAbility conference that took place a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the point um, is that it's going to take some time to get build the consensus around uh, what the role uh, core competencies are, what the uh, what the role profile needs to be. But uh, really, this role uh, is a fusion of uh, education or teaching approaches, therapy or health and social care approaches, particularly from occupational therapy, some from speech and language therapy as well, as well as the computing and the specific AT underpinning IT uh, elements that make up the role. So it's a, it's a hybrid role. Um, so the Let's be clear about what we're talking about. So we're we could have called this electronic assistive technology, but we thought educational assistive technology was a better title. Uh, we didn't mean to exclude health and social care contexts, but we wanted to emphasize that this is not coming from a medical model. It's coming from a social model of disability, and that will be um, exemplified in the first module. Um, so we're talking about uh, computer access technology. We're talking about communication technology. We're talking about um, environmental control and uh, really we want to ensure that students are supported um, right across the spectrum so we'll be look, covering assistive technology that's suitable for people with complex needs all the way through to things like literacy support software for someone who's dyslexic or has another specific learning difficulty. Uh, so this has to be about fun though. Uh, we want people to be able to enjoy their use of the technology, which really means it needs to start from a person-centered perspective. Like what does that person want to achieve? So we are using the ATIA definition for what assistive technology is. Um, we, uh, we are going to be looking at the whole gamut of computer access devices. We're gonna be looking at software. We're gonna be looking at uh, things that are baked into the operating system. So there's fantastic, <clears throat> excuse me, accessibility affordances built into Windows, Mac OS, iOS, et cetera. Uh, but we will go into more specific um, things like environmental controls, but that will partly be about how to make the referrals to the services that uh, provide those statutorily across the UK. It is slightly different across the nation. So we'll cover those differences as well for students that are in um, each of the uh, nations that make up the UK. So this is who's teaching the program. Course leader is Professor Anna Lou Waller, and many of you may be familiar with her, but she's a towering figure, particularly in the, well, in the AT world, but particularly around AAC. Rolf Black has joined the program as a lecturer as well. He is a uh, researcher by background uh, and has a huge um, library of research to his, uh, to his name. Uh, so for, if anyone needs a reference for anything, Rolf's your man. Um, although I, I'm hoping I'm uh, bringing the uh, the more practical end of the program. Uh, so I literally have just started. This is uh, me two weeks into the role. Uh, prior to joining the university, I worked at, uh, at JISC as a subject specialist, and I provided support on both assistive technology and infrastructure to universities and colleges across the UK. I did a lot of work in specialist colleges in that time, which is not surprising because I spent 15 years working at one. Uh, lastly, I was assistant principal at Beaumont, but before I got promoted, I ran the technology team and that technology service was an integrated service that covered all the mainstream IT uh, and, uh, and an assistive technology team, uh, which consisted of four people um, with a lead assistive technologist. Uh, we also covered all the learning and technology enhanced learning stuff, uh, classroom use of technology, if you like as well as the MIS management information. So uh, I've got quite a wide background in technology. So this, uh, this course then is really for anybody who wants to be uh, the educational assistive technologist who wants to take that role on. So the kind of people that we're expecting to join us are likely to be already employed in an AT focused role. So we're thinking teachers or teaching assistants, learning, su learning support workers, possibly therapists, therapy assistants or technicians, and we think technologists from a wide variety of backgrounds. So 
given that we expect most students will already be employed and are likely to be working in an AT rich environment already, uh, we expect most people will choose our part time option. There is a full time option for this course, but we think the two year part time will be much more, um, much more um, uh, popular. Uh, so um, we we think that uh, we may also get uh, students from Edu for beyond education environments, so social care, third sector organisations or charities, um, anyone that runs a centre that works uh, with disabled people at pretty much at any stage of life, um, but anywhere that's got like a lifelong learning um, kind of thread, I think will be interested in this course. Uh, we, we do uh, require uh, people to have an, an appropriate working context, which means if they don't have a, an appropriate working context, perhaps if they were taking the full time version of the course, we'll have to find work placements for them. Uh, so that's what that's about. Um, so it is a blended learning offer officially. However, it's mostly online. It's the vast majority of this work will be delivered online and that will be a mix of synchronous like uh, live uh, uh, seminars or small group working as well as uh, asynchronous material that people can do whenever it suits them. That's not time sensitive. Uh, so we do plan or we have from when we uh, incepted this program, we uh, planned to have a couple of intensive weeks, um, one a year for the part time program. Uh, and we will do those if we can in 21. But uh, it's just too early to say um, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, whether it will be possible, because, of course, a lot of the people who are going to want to do this program are going to be working with people with additional um, medical needs, which means that bringing them together uh, could be uh, difficult. So uh, we'll have to play that by ear, but ultimately we would like to have intensive teaching weeks that allow us to do the more practical elements like uh, example assessments and demonstrating equipment and software and also allowing students to present to each other because we absolutely intend to create a dynamic learning community here where we are expecting uh, to learn from our students and our students to learn from each other uh, we want to empower our students to share what they know and share what they um, what they uh, what they're doing in their contexts. We think that'll be a very powerful way to learn. So the entry requirements, um, it does say that you, you need to have a first degree. However, um, we would say that uh, experience really matters. We have kept the um, the entry requirements flexible. So the, that or in on this slide is um, capitalized because you don't have to have a first degree to, to do this if you have relevant experience. So I actually think that someone who's got say 15, 10, however many years experience working say as a learning support worker uh, in a suitable context is going to be probably a better candidate for this course than someone who's, who's come out with a first in computing. We're looking for people who are um, socially interactive and are able to support uh, disabled young people in all of those those rich interactions. So we will teach people the technical things um, if they don't already know them. Uh, we're, we're hoping to pull people in from three areas. Uh, so from teaching, from health and social care or therapy and from sort of more technical areas like computing or assistive technology itself. So if you're not sure, contact us. Um, and we'll have a conversation about it. But please don't feel that you can't apply if you don't have a first degree. It's not essential if you've got relevant experience. So I'm just going to go through um, the modules in outline. and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the first one. And then these slides will be available. Neil will make them available. That has all the detail for the other modules. So I'm just going to have a look at the first one now because uh, we don't really have time to go through them all. And then this slide deck can be considered as a sort of reference point, but all of this is on the university website as well. So these are the core modules. There are going to also be uh, 40 elective credits from the uh, School of Education, from the health or therapy area and from computing. So depending on where someone's coming from in their career, we will actually um, spend some time in the first module the assistive technologist, which is quite, has a reflective component that will look at somebody's existing experience and will work out um, which of the optional modules might be most appropriate for somebody to do uh, in order to kind of plug the gaps, if you like. So someone who's already a teacher doesn't need to do a basic teaching qualification. But if you don't already have that when you join the program, we'd ask you to, to focus on that education element when you uh, when you approach this. Uh, so 
Um, if you come into this from, from a technical black background, clearly you don't need to do any of the computing IT related modules. But if you come in from, say, a occupational therapy background, we won't expect you to do the health therapy element. So that's what a, a large part of that first module is about. So we will have to introduce people to all of the AT systems that are available. So we've got a large 20 credit module that will cover all of the, the range of AT software, hardware, et cetera. Um, and we'll be bringing in as many vendors, suppliers, uh, other experts from across the field as guest lecturers as we can, because it's impossible for one or two people to know um, enough about all of the vast array of AT that's out there. So that's why we want to bring in lots of other voices and we'll invite students as well to share things where that's relevant. Um, so once we've had a look at what's available, we can then get into how to do assessment for assistive tech. And this is very much based on a person-centered approach. Uh, I think a lot of assessment kind of gets it wrong that it doesn't provide what the individual is looking for. So what we want to start with is the things that will motivate um, the person that you're working with and, and work from there. We've got a module on AT and educational programs. So the point of this is to embed the AT approaches within a taught curriculum. Uh, in some cases, that will be about how we um, how we work as a team with other members of uh, other members of the um, multidisciplinary team. But we really go into that in module six, which is the partner relationships one. So the specialist and mainstream AT solutions is a smaller module, and the point of this one is to uh, look at uh, all of the uh, times that you're going to use say a specialist solution over a mainstream one or vice versa or even some kind of hybrid and the reality is there's a lot of hybridization here because the line is blurring all the time as to what is a built-in affordance or a built-in piece of AT say in iOS on a, on a, on a tablet uh, on an Apple tablet or in uh, the Windows or Office accessibility options and the learning tools in Office have even blurred this even further uh, but there are times where you will want to use the specialist uh, options and that's where we'll deal with that in that module. The, the partner relationships uh, module covers quite a lot of referral points as well. So it's not just about working with the team locally, although that is a large part of it. And that does change depending on your context. So if you're in a specialist college that has your own, uh, a, your own say occupational therapists or speech and language therapists, then uh, that's gonna be a different working relationship than say being in a school where you're accessing community therapists. Um, we'll also look at how to make referrals to uh, the statutory services like the NHS AAC communication hubs or the ECS hubs or how to make other referrals such as access to work or DSA, Dis Disabled Students Allowance. There's a dissertation project which um, is going to be very much based on people's working practice. Uh, and then again, I've, we've got the, the, optional, um, the optional credits. So just to try and put people's uh, mind at rest a bit here and just to explain that we're trying to keep this real. All the modules have a practical assessment and a theoretical assessment, but wherever we can, the practical coursework is being designed so it will um, align with what you're doing anyway in your role. So the point here is to make it realistic. You're going to have to write it up academically, of course, but the actual task will be something that you're doing in your role anyway. Uh, so that's about making it achievable. Uh, Neil, I'm not going to go any further through the slides now. If people want to uh, come back to this, they can have a look at the um, uh, they can have a look at the uh, at the slide deck. So, um, what I will do though is, is just um, give everybody my um, if I can give you my uh, my email here. Uh, if anybody wants to ask any questions, please uh, feel free to drop me a line. Great, thanks, Rowan. That's really useful. Um, so yeah, if anyone has any questions, feel free to put those in the questions or the chat pane um, and we'll answer it. I'd be interested in, if anyone here is interested in taking that course um, or for that matter, if anyone is interested in taking any of the courses you see today, um, it'd be really nice to hear from you. So let us know. And we're just gonna switch back to my screen now. Thank you, Rowan, that's really interesting. No problem. And uh, yeah, I can see that we've already had a question from Kim Lawther. Are there any scholarships bursaries available for the Educational Assistive Technology Masters? Do you know of any, Rowan? Um, there is, if there is a, if I, if I just, um, I can paste into the, into the chat pane a, um, this is the, the link to the, to the programme. 
Um, so this will go to the whole audience, I hope, this link. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so one of, the, one of the tabs off of that page uh, is fees and funding. Um, and there are links there to um, the uh, scholarships that we are aware, aware of for that the university knows about for people studying from the different uh, nations. So that's, that's the first place to start. Um, if you're asking Kim specifically, uh, have we got uh, bursaries that are specifically for this program? No, we haven't yet been able to do that. Okay, great. Um, and uh, what I can do for those who are watching this live is I can just share my screen just to show you uh, what that link is. So dundee.ac.uk forward slash postgraduate forward slash educational dash assistive dash technology dash part dash time. I think I got all that. <laughs> and um, this is the section you were talking about, is it Rowan? Yeah, Please. and it, it breaks down by by the nation. So you can see, um, you can see where um, the, uh, find scholarships for applicants from the particular nations because they do vary okay yeah yeah okay great thanks that's really useful um yeah kim says okay thank you so i think that answered the question thank you kim for the question feel free to get in touch directly kim if you want to follow up on anything great thanks Rowan. right i'm just going to reopen my slides Okay, there we go. So we should be back in. Just checking the way subtitles are working. Okay, great. So um, there are also uh, technology specific training um, that you can make use of. Um, we've listed some of the main ones here. Uh, these are mostly suppliers, um, and you've got general suppliers like Barry Bennett. Um, Microlink, E-Insist, um, Diversity and Ability, and then you've got more specific ones. So Dolphin, Sight and Sound um, are more based around uh, kind of visual impairments and obviously auditory impairments for Sight and Sound. Um, we've also got Text Help and Claro. Um, those are, uh, they, they have a kind of suite of educational products um, so they're quite useful to check out uh, they also do free trials now nuance uh, for dragon uh, that's uh, that's speech to text um, so dictation software um, I had a I had another look today just to see if they'd changed and there was not much on their website taking you through to somewhere that their links page was broken um, so let me know if you are interested in any training on that and what i can do is uh, put you in touch with the trainer that um, worked with myself um, or put something together um, that will suit you um, they've always missed the trick i feel in supporting education around dragon um, so that's a little bit disappointing um, microsoft is obviously a major platform uh, they've got their own training that you can access. Uh, there's an accessibility learning webinar series. It's uh, long, there's a lot to it, um, but this is really good if you want the details um, and you can select uh, the sections that you're interested in in particular. Uh, we've also, um, in my other role for National Star College, we've been producing webinars for the EdTech Demonstrator Program, which is uh, funded by Department for Education. Just last week, we had a Microsoft webinar, um, which was really useful. Um, so I'll put the source there. Uh, I actually think I'm going to watch that back myself because there was quite a lot packed into um, a short amount of time. Uh, AbilityNet are one of the major organizations within the sector. Um, they're really worth checking out. They've got a lot of resources, um, including fact sheets, webinars. Uh, My Computer, My Way is, is really interesting um, it helps to make a device more easy uh, to use describing the baked in accessibility options that are found in a range of equipment i was actually really impressed with the level of detail uh, they went into um, with that uh, they have digital accessibility resources 
uh, workplace adjustments if you're focused more on the, a vocational area and uh, other useful links to other third sector organizations. The A Center is uh, more focused on areas around speech and language therapy, uh, but they do cover a wide um, range. Uh, they have entry level training uh, right the way up to academic qualifications. Um, and it, the academic side is delivered in a partnership with uh, Manchester Metropolitan University. Um, so those, uh, I screenshotted the list of resources they have at the moment. So they have different training units, create and make courses, Makaton, uh, a pod two day introduction workshop, um, ACE Center study days on iPad accessibility and iOS 13. Um, another day on wheelchair mounting for AAC and access devices and also bespoke training. They are specialists around um, speech language therapists. So if that's the area that you're focusing on, um, really recommend checking them out there. The call center um, is based in Scotland, but they deliver resources um, and you can access a lot of these um, in England as well. Uh, they deliver training courses, on-site training, webinars, um, inclusive digital technology, seminars and events, online workshops. The uh, resource that I always use them for are the um, application wheels, because um, those are really useful. They show you uh, different AAC apps or different types of apps that you can use, and they lay them out in a wheel so you can find the features um, that you want. For AAC and high-end tech, um, we've got uh, some different organizations here, inclusive technology again, um, but also assistive wear, Abilia, Toby Churchill, um, Liberator, Smartbox, Texas, Therapy Box, and Toby Dynavox. So this is useful if you already know what type of device your learners using around AAC in particular. Um, if you don't, then you could probably go um, to the ACE Centre and start there and work out from that. Um, and also, we're happy to help you and, and get you started on that journey. Environmental control systems, uh, you want to be looking at Abilia, um, Giwa, uh, DH2 solutions. Uh, Possum are a major one. I think Possum are the supplier for the NHS and Steeper as well. Open University has some uh, has uh, some resources. Um, now, Rowan, I think you were the one that checked this out and said some of the references were a little bit dated, so it's worth bearing that in mind. Um, but it's a course adapted um, extract from the Open University course H810, Accessible Online Learning Supporting Disabled Learners, Disabled Students. JISC um, are a really useful source uh, for lots of knowledge. Um, I'll often type in keywords in JISC to see if they've got any um, resources because they create um, in-depth resources and are constantly updating these. Um, they have support and accessibility and assistive technology with Kelly Moat. Um, they have an accessibility landing page. Uh, they have some great resources about the accessibility regulations. That's generally what I um, point people to uh, with that area. Um, oh, sorry, just lost my slides. Um, a list of accessibility, uh, sorry, just having some problems with my webcam. List of accessibility and assistive technology related guides, uh, accessibility drop-in clinic webinars. Uh, they have wider support with strategic use of technology, infrastructure and assistive technology. Um, you can contact them for integrated digital technology strategies um, and support for teaching, learning, assessment and the digital student experience. Sorry, I got a little bit distracted there. Um, I had a, um important information uh, from Alan Wilson. Thank you for that. Um, he said that Call Centre became Call Scotland in 2008. Thanks for that, Alan. <laughs> I was uh, referencing it from the website, I think. Okay. 
Um, for Google, um, they've got some really good resources on their website if you're looking for something uh, that is generic and focuses on, on their products. Um, they've got some tools for diverse learners training, uh, G Suite user guide to accessibility, um, and built-in Chromebook accessibility features. What I enjoyed is their um, Google Accessibility YouTube playlist as you can pick out the areas that you want to learn about um, and they update these fairly regularly. Um, the short videos, kind of less than five minutes long, some of them as short as two minutes long, are really good if you're just looking for little snippets um, and learning uh, what things you can do with Google products. Now, TechAbility, um, this is us. Uh, we cover a wide range of subjects. Uh, we have pre-created um, courses so we can do things on uh, 10 pieces of uh, technology to help your learners with accessibility. Um, we've created bespoke courses around dictation. Um, we can carry out consultancy visits where we can uh, come into your organization either remotely or in person when lockdown is lifted and talk to your staff, observe your learners, and work out what your needs are and uh, respond to that with training and resources. We also have the TechAbility standards, um, which we can create an audit on your organization um, to see what areas you're meeting and what areas you're not meeting. Um, and we've just got a bit of feedback on the right-hand side there um, from some of the training that we've delivered. The link is there at the bottom, techability.org.uk forward slash support forward slash training and we've got some upcoming webinars um, so on Tuesday the 8th of December uh, we're looking at captioning so if you want to know how we're captioning today and you want to know how to caption in any platform then we'll let you know um, kind of what the main tools are with both paid and free tools so we can give you uh, insights on that on Tuesday 19th of January, uh, we're joined um, by graduate member of the British Psychological Society, Kelly Mote, to discuss her research and practice. Um, this is going to be focusing on digital mental health um, and her investigations into the role of technology acceptance as an influence on young people's willingness to use digital mental health interventions. 23rd of February uh, 2021, so looking into next year now, um, we've got one on Clara Writing Helper. Um, this is a tool that helps you organize essays. It's got some really good features that are for um, anyone really who's, who's looking to plan essays, uh, but it is really useful for learners with uh, disabilities um, and helps you do things like understand essay questions, set tasks, manage citations, create bibliographies and much more. Um, I wish I'd had that actually when I was at school. I was terrible at essays. <laughs> um, accessing technology and languages, uh, covering that on the 16th of March. Um, there's a, a kind of large um, crossover with kind of languages and um, kind of disabilities um, in that if you English is your second language, um, you, you're going to find it much harder to access resources. So we'll review some tools that can help cross these language barriers, um, and that'll include options on computers, tablets, mobile phones, and AAC devices. If you um, keep track of us on Twitter, um, then we'll release the link out for that. Uh, we're just um, gonna be swapping over our webinar platforms. Um, so that will probably be on Zoom. Uh, Accessible Tech Thursdays is, um, as I mentioned previously, it's a National Star Collaboration weekly webinar program. Um, it's a Department for Education um, demonstrator project and it's designed for mainstream education. So uh, that source is there, bit.ly forward slash capital A, capital T, capital T, H-U-R-S. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the webinar. Hopefully there's been some really useful um, guides there as to where you can access training. Um, you can email us at techability at natspec.org.uk, follow us on Twitter at tech underscore ability one, 
or access on, on our webpage, uh, techabilities.org.uk. All of our webinars are recorded and will be available at bit.ly, watch Tech Ability webinars. And just watch out for the capitals there because those can catch you out. Um, thank you to Rowan. Um, thanks for uh, all your contributions there. I know that was really useful and I'm sure some people will be in touch. Thank you for the questions and for all those that attended. Um, and I'll just stay on for a few minutes uh, in case anyone's got any questions or comments. Um, but thank you. Thank you for having me, Neil. Oh, thanks, Rowan. That's really interesting.